Danny Shapiro, good morning. Good morning. So there you were, like all the rest of us, rushing headlong into life. You had a family, a career. What made you stop and consider your spiritual life? It was really a tremendous need to understand where I was at this point in my life and how to move forward. Um, and that's where this book begins. It was really with my, 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 my journey to try to understand what might give my life and, and perhaps my family's life greater meaning and, um, and to also understand where it was that I came from and what it had meant to, um, to particularly to my father as I was growing up. I, I write in the book this beautiful quote um, of Carl Jung's, who is the poet of midlife, and, and he also defines midlife as age, over age 35, you know, 35 and up. Um, and, he, and, he, and he writes, thoroughly unprepared, we take the step into the afternoon of life. And he goes on to, to write that what worked for us in life's morning is of little use in the afternoon and will by evening have become a lie. I mean, that, that's whoa. And, and, and I think that the recognition of that that so many people face when they're you know, entering the middle of their lives, however they define that, and they're, they're dealing with the aging or the death of their parents, with the, um, with the birth and the growing up of their children, and of just a kind of um, sense of time speeding up. Somebody told me the other day that Grace Paley, who had been a teacher of mine, um, she had said to this other friend of ours, from 50 to 80, it's not minutes, it's seconds. And what does truth mean when it comes to writing memoir? And you know what is, what is the writer's relationship to the page? What what does it mean to set down words on the page, thinking I'm writing fiction now? And what does it mean to set down words with the awareness that I'm trying to um, hew to memory? As a teacher, I see no difference in teaching fiction and memoir because it is it is still an awareness on the writer's part that the writer is telling a story. Now where that becomes complicated is when a writer actually invents when writing memoir. Um, I, I, I've, I like to call that the pathological memoir, <laughs> which has given memoir a really bad name in recent years because all that long hot summer I kept lists and made piles, keep, store, toss. It was my grieving process, I suppose. I wasn't so much mourning the loss of my mother as coming face to face with the absolute end of our story. The sharp sliver of hope I had always kept with me, despite what I knew, despite what anyone said, that sliver had shattered. The more that I am actually able to be in touch with, or sort of meet, meet myself, really, you know, sort of like meet myself in the darkness, which is a little bit what meditation feels like to me. Um, and, and to really have a sense of, a, of greater connection, that makes me a better everything. It, it makes me a better mother, it makes me a better wife, it makes me a better, I, I don't know if it makes me a better writer yet since I haven't written anything else since then, but it, make, it, it makes me a better member, member of society, a better friend, because I'm not, it's, it, 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 the paradox of it, is that by doing that I am much less mired in my own stuff mm -hmm. and much more able to be um, looking outward from a place of, of, of internal um, grounding. And I was in New York by myself in my hotel being picked up in the morning at you know, 6 o'clock in the morning to go over to the Today Show and I was in a complete and total state of panic. Um, because if you, you know, if you go on the Today Show, you have three minutes to say everything. And as you can all already hear, I, I don't speak in sound bites. And I was really nervous. And I called um, a woman that I had become very close to during the writing of Devotion, who is a Buddhist teacher named Sylvia Borstein. And I was telling her how, how, how frightened I was. Um, and Sylvia paused on the other end of the phone and she said, Honey, you've written a book about what you know now. And I found that so liberating. You know, in other words, and it was such a great piece of wisdom in general. Like, this is what you know now, you'll know more tomorrow. But don't feel like they have permission to go and explore their spirituality. Oh, that's a great question, because I didn't feel like I had permission either. Um, and I really, really believe that if I could do this, any, any, any woman can do this, because I think we all feel this pressure to be caregivers, this pressure to 
keep our whole family afloat and there's endless to-do lists all the time but what happens if we're not actually taking care of our most deepest inner lives um, I was just thinking yesterday of this great metaphor of you know how on airplanes um, when the oxygen mask comes down they say you need to put your oxygen mask on before you put on your child and I think the embarking on a journey to understand some of this really has to do with giving it to yourself so that then you can give something to your children. Well, in many ways, maybe this is this book is your mitzvah, Danny Shapiro. The book is called Devotion, and you can read more about what Danny discovered and her journey in that book. Thank you so much this morning, Danny. Thank you.